Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. Hey, on this video I'm going to be making a smoked crisp pork belly sandwich. So uh, if, you, if you guys like a good BLT, you're really, really going to love this one. Um, it's actually a two-day process, so we're going to start the video off with just the initial preparation of the meat and, uh, you know, the seasoning and everything. So uh, let's get started. All right, so here we have the, uh, the belly here. This is a little over two pounds of uh, Berkshire pork. This is typically how it'll, it'll come. It'll uh, have the uh, port skin on here. And uh, for this preparation, I'm gonna go ahead and remove uh, the skin and then just trim a little of the excess fat. So let's get going on that. All right, so there we are. Um, you all know what we can do with this. If you wanted to, we could strip it up, make, uh, you know, cracklins, pork rind, chicharrones, whatever you want to call it. But there's a lot of goodness left in here, too. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do just a little bit more evening out on the fat here, and then I'll rinse, pat dry the... Uh, the, the uh, pork belly, and then we're, we'll start the seasoning. All right, guys, uh, so as you can see, fat's been trimmed, uh, washed and patted the belly. Now we're gonna apply the rub. Um, I'm using a homemade rub here, but any commercial rub is great. Uh, I'd actually highly recommend the uh, Tango Spice Company's uh, chicken and rib rub would be awesome on this. I have some, but I do not have enough to cover this whole belly right now. Great product there. So like I said, I'm going to pack this on pretty heavily. All right, now what I'm going to do is um, place this in a large Ziploc bag, put it in the fridge. We're going to let it sit for 24 hours, more of a kind of a dry marinade. And it's actually going to, you know, basically start the curing process. And I'm not curing this, I'm not making bacon, but it's going to start, you know, give it a little of that cured flavor uh, for the smoke. So. Uh, it's going to add an extra little dimension of flavor here, and uh, like I said, give it a little bit of a bacony flavor. Uh, so, I will see you tomorrow when we're ready to put this on the smoker. All right, guys, so it's been 24 hours now, and uh, what I've done is I've pulled the belly from the bag and rinsed off all the rub. It's actually changed in texture a little bit. I mean, it's starting to get a more of a cured feeling, as you can see. It's a lot darker than it used to be. Um, you know, I was sitting there looking at this thing, and the grain is going this way. So it needs to be sliced this way, since it is such a small belly. And again, I'm not making bacon. I'm, you know, going to be making a, kind of a twist on a BLT sandwich out of this thing. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and slice it down the middle here. Um, just so I get, I, I'd rather get more, like little mini slices than just a, you know, a few longer slices. This is a pretty small belly. I mean, it's pretty thin. I'd actually like to have got a bigger one. I mean, a thicker one. But anyway, got to deal with what we got. Uh, okay, the pit's uh, preheated now, so let's get out there and uh, we'll get this thing cooking. All right, guys. Okay, I got my pit preheated to 200 degrees. And uh, it's normally, you know, good bacon smoking temp. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cook this for about 15 minutes with no wood. And that's just, I want to get the surface of this meat dried off since I did rinse it with water. And then I'll be adding um, apple wood. Um, 
planning, I want to take this up to 150 degrees internal temp and then I'll pull it and uh, chill it. Um, I'm guessing, uh, I don't know, maybe three, three hours or so. So we'll check on it in a little bit. All right, so while the uh, pork belly's out there smoking, I'm going to work on a, like a glaze a reduction that I have planned. Um, it's gonna be a Jack Daniels uh, reduction. Then I'm gonna ultimately crust it with a black pepper. So I've got two, uh, cups of little number seven here. Seven in the morning and I'm cracking open a bottle of JD. Um, so what I want to let this do is start to kind of roll. And in the meantime, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of uh, whole coriander seeds. I'm putting that in there now um, for a couple reasons. This stuff, I, I just love the flavor that coriander gives to a sauce. Um, but I also want to soften the seeds up. So they're going to be in there uh, softening as the Jack Daniels comes to temp. So when that happens, I'll, uh, we'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so as you can see, it just came to a rolling boil. I'm going to turn this down now to a low simmer. Start adding the other elements here. Um, crushed red pepper. This is to taste. I'm going to go with about know, three pinches. Got uh, celery seed here. This isn't celery salt, celery seed. I go with the, let's say, four pinches of this. This isn't any recipe I've written down. Actually, it changes every time I make it, but I love making Jack Daniels just, uh make some really good sauces. About a quarter cup of um, apple vinegar. Teaspoon of mustard powder. Tablespoon of butter. And I got a cup and a half of maple syrup. And this is real maple syrup. And normally if I was making a Jack Daniels glaze, you know, for ribs or whatever, I'd probably use like an agave nectar or, you know, honey. But maple and pork belly, it's a no-brainer. Right now I'm going to go ahead and just bring this back up to a little rolling boil. And then I'm going to turn it down to simmer and let this reduce. I think it's just the, the way that Jack Daniels, um, you know, aged their uh, their whiskey in those oak barrels. It's just uh, awesome flavor, awesome flavor. All right, guys. So this is it. Basically, what I'm going to do is again just let this simmer until it starts to reduce, and, and you, you'll know when it gets to that nice kind of a a thin honey or you know like kind of more like a maple syrup consistency then it's done and then I'll just set it aside we'll uh, see you in a bit all right folks we've probably got about I don't know maybe an hour probably closer to 45 minutes of cooking left on these they're actually cooking a little faster than they normally would and I, and I know why uh, usually I, I look for like a three inch thick uh, belly and and uh, I didn't have that to that option this time and these are pretty thin and nonetheless they're going to be really good um, what I'm going to do now is we're going to apply that glaze and uh, my pepper so let's get going on that okay so here's the glaze now um, this is all the liquid that I originally started out with and I went from you know a little over three and a half cups down to about one and a quarter cup once it's been reduced um, the other thing I want to, just in case I forget to post the text, I almost forgot to add salt, which is a very important element, and uh, I added one teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. So I'm just going to apply this. I would have liked this to probably set up just a little bit more than it did. This is a reduction, but like I said, these are 
I'm ahead of schedule on my cook, which is fine because uh, the way I'm going to be ultimately preparing this is uh, I'm going to let this set up, chill in the fridge, and then I'm going to slice it like bacon and then fry it. Freshly ground black pepper. So that reduction is kind of a glue. This will be a nice balance because, you know, the crushed red pepper is in there for a little bit of heat, but it's a different type of heat than this. This is, I think, a little bit more intense. A really beautiful color going on in this. Looks like a lot of pepper, but realize again, I'm going to be slicing this, you know, like bacon, basically. So it'll be just nice little, nice little bit of heat in the mouth when you're eating. All right, so let's get this back in the smoker. All right. Now, one thing I wanted to mention. Um, you know, these, the belly meat has a lot of fat in it, obviously. It's what they make bacon from. Um, it's very important that when you're inserting your temperature probe that you insert it in the meat and not in the fat, or else you're gonna get a false reading. You know, the fat's gonna read um, a warmer temperature than the meat itself. So just uh, something to think about if you decide to make this or, you know, bacon. See you in a bit. All right, so we're at our target temp now. I'm going to go ahead and pull these. All right, you can see beautiful color on these. Um, what I'm going to do now is let these set till they start to cool. And then I'm going to place them in the uh, fridge. I want to make sure they cool down so they don't develop, you know, condensation in the refrigerator. Then tonight we're going to slice these up and I'm going to fry them like bacon and make some killer BLTs. So until then, I'm going to go ahead and go in the kitchen and I'm going to start the uh, seasoned mayonnaise that I'm going to put on the sandwich. So let's, uh, let's head in the kitchen. All right, so we're gonna make a really basic uh, seasoned mayo. Um, a while back I ordered a few spices from Tango Spice Company, and he sent me a bunch of samples. And one of the samples he sent me was uh, the Southwest Sunset. Tasted this, and this is pretty much the flavors I wanna add. It's just got a nice kind of a mellow, warm heat. Just add a little bit of that in there. I'm going to add a little lime juice, just fresh lime to kind of brighten it up a little. I think that'll be good. Just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Perfect, perfect amount of citrus and just a nice amount of uh, seasoning there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the fridge, let it uh, kind of meld together more and then uh, 
be ready for the sandwiches. All right, so the grill is all fired up outside. The uh, pork belly is all set up nice. This glaze is unbelievable, by the way. I took a little snitchel and uh, man. Um, so because of how thin these are, I'm gonna cut it at a bevel to try to make these a little bit bigger than, uh, than they really are. Cut this end piece off first. Nice ring. And here we are. Um, I still have plenty of uh, end pieces that I can trim off of when I want some snacks. Um, this is what I'm gonna be grilling up outside. So uh, let's hit the grill. All right guys, so obviously cast iron skillet. Um, pretty much the coals are just on this side. I got that way I can adjust the heat since I don't have the benefit of uh, you know being able to turn up and down the heat. I can just slide it over to get it into our cooler zone if I want. Wow, <laughs> I can already smell this, just smells insane. All right, guys, I am ready for some pork belly sandwiches. I'm going to transfer these onto a paper towel. <laughs> this, oh my, this smells so good. It's like a BLT on steroids. All right, it's sandwich time. So, got a, a ciabatta roll that I bought par-baked. So I just, I mean, it's still steaming. You can, I don't know if you can see the steam. Just came out of the oven, so it's nice and hot. I'm gonna hit that bottom part of the roll with some of that kind of an aioli, that seasoned mayo that we made. Some arugula. And I went with this because it, you know, it's got that kind of nice, kind of a peppery flavor. And we're gonna layer on some of this porky goodness here. Now some avocado. Heirloom tomato, fresh from my garden. I'm not the best gardener in the world, but my heirlooms took off. Some more of that mayo. Okay, let's get this thing cut in half here. A 
looks really, really good. Yep, it's a winner, guys. It's a winner. Give it a shot. Thanks for stopping by. See you in the next vid.